Hey guys, how you doing? My name's HR. It's uh, Mardi Gras here in Louisiana. Just sitting here chilling. Lived in New Orleans 47 years. Seen it all, done it all. So I'm kind of taking it easy this year. Um, anyway, um, I wanted to make a video on this guitar. Uh, Nick Savigny or Savini, um, who has his channel, The Riff, his YouTube channel, with The Riff with Nick Savigny. By the way, go to it and subscribe to it. It's a great channel. Uh, asked me to put up a video about this guitar that I actually found by watching one of his videos. Um, it's a 1965 Stratocaster. Um, it's a late 64, early 65 that I found on Reverb.com that Nick actually had featured in one of his videos. Um, I did a little bit of research, reached out to the guy on Reverb and ended up buying it. But um, everything about this guitar screams 1964, except the pickups. Everything on this guitar is from 64, and it's all original, except the finish and except the uh, string tree, okay? The pickups are dated January 15, 1965, so technically it's a 65. But uh, everything else is from 64, so it's a pre-CBS, late 64, early 65 Strat. The purpose of the video is not so much to play anything, it's, even though I'll play a little bit at the end, um, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. Um, but if any of you guys are out there looking to buy a vintage guitar, um, just want to let you know there's hope. Um, Nick and a good friend of mine, Holger Nansel here, who, uh, who's a vintage guitar guru and is part owner of Comet Amps here in Baton Rouge, um, or, or vintage Strat enthusiasts and know a lot about them. I've always wanted one and at 62 years old I wasn't able to grab one until now. Um, but um, I saw this one on Nick's channel, decided to inquire about it, and I ended up getting it. Um, I do have to sell some other guitars to pay for it. But um, anyway, um, the story on this thing goes like this. Um, I looked at it on Reverb.com and it was you know, you can buy it, but no returns. So I was actually able to negotiate a return with the guy I bought it from, in case I did want to return it. Uh, we talked on the phone. He reached out to me. I reached out to him. He looked at some of our YouTube videos, um, knew that I was legit. I knew that he was legit after he told me who he was. He actually is a uh, songwriter out of Austin who writes songs for a very well-known country artist. He's actually written a few hit songs. And uh, we ended up having a nice conversation, and he told me, flat out told me, uh, he gave me the story on the guitar, which I'll tell you in a second. Uh, and he said, look, just keep it for a few days, keep it for a week. If you want to return it, I'll give you all your money back. He said, but you're not going to want to return it once you get this thing in your hands. And he was exactly right. There was no way it was going back. Um, the way he got the guitar, the story goes, is that two daughters had it, and their father had the guitar, bought it originally, stripped the finish off of it, but didn't do anything else to it, just stripped the finish, okay? And um, he passed away in 1990, and they had been having it under a bed since 1990 sitting in the case. So they brought it to this gentleman, who's pretty well known in Austin, and he bought it from them, and immediately took it to Austin Vintage Guitars, and I think Steve is the guy who did it, and uh, had a refin refinish put on it in Fiesta Red. Okay, I knew all of this before I bought it, obviously. Um, but anyway, that's what he told me. He said everything else is original on the guitar, um, string tree, and the uh, the finish was done. So anyway, I ended up ordering the guitar. I, I took a chance and ordered the guitar, and it and it came in. And um, when it came in, I brought it to Holger. The guy I was telling you about, Holger Natzel. And um, I actually sent some photos to Nick as well. And um, I asked Holger if he would look at it. And he said, absolutely. He said, I'll talk about vintage guitars all day. So he refrets a lot of vintage guitars for a lot of players. Um, and he's really in the know with this stuff. And he owns a few vintage guitars. So uh, I brought it to Holger. And he looked at it. And he said, man, all looks good. No red flags. He says, this thing really looks well. Um, looks like it's going to be a great one, he said, but let's plug it up. So we plugged it up, 
And as soon as we started playing through it, he flat out told me, he said, man, you got to keep her. He said, you got to keep her. He said, that thing sounds incredible. So I was really, really happy to hear that. And um, so I took it home, you know, very, very happy. So um, what I decided to do, I have some other really nice strats, and I was going to A-B it against this one. So what I did was I have a custom shop relic strat, 1960 limited edition, that I call CC, and it's for color over color. It's vintage white over um, sunburst, and it was actually pictured on a, on a blog online, and absolutely beautiful guitar that I bought that was actually made in 2010. Sounds fantastic. Uh, I also have a first year 1982 62 American Vintage Reissue Strat. That sounds fantastic as well. I bought that guitar way back in the 80s and just a wonderful guitar. I also have a couple other strats. I have a SRB Signature model that was refinished by um, MJT that I put Jesse Davey Bluebird pickups in and a number one replica of Stevie's number one that was built by MCL Guitars, John McLaughlin. McLaughlin Custom Guitars built it. A great guitar, and I put in McConaughey Bell Tone pickups. Absolutely fantastic pickups. Great pickups. Probably sound the closest to these pickups. Okay. Well, anyway, when I got home, I started a in them. And one of the things I found out right off the bat was that this guitar sounds much bigger, much fatter, than any of those other guitars. It's not even close. Uh, when you're in the room, it's not even close. Um, I was shocked. I really was. Um, this guitar has got a very big sound to it. Even on the, the high E string playing up the neck, the notes are just big and they're round and they're warm. Um, like I said, it's the biggest, fattest, roundest, warmest sounding strat I've ever played in my life, ever. And I was shocked at the difference between that and my other guitars. Now, all those other guitars still sound great, and I still love them. They just don't sound like this one, okay? Um, now, to be totally objective, I gotta admit, this guitar may, some people could argue, lack a little bit in that overall chime department, okay? Well, the other guitars sound thinner, but they have a little bit more chime on the top end, okay? It's not night and day, but there is a little bit of difference. This guitar is just very big sounding. So, if you want to make an argument, or if you want to be totally objective, yeah, does the other one have a little bit more chime? Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't really bother me. You know, this guitar just sounds like nothing else that I own, okay? So, anyway, um, I... Um, I grabbed this thing, and I like it, and, and I, I love it, I should say. And the reason I'm putting this out here is to tell you guys, man, if you do your due diligence, you can end up with a vintage guitar. They're not cheap, but on a refins, you can get them in the four figures rather than the five. Some less than others, depending on the condition of the guitar. This guitar was all original except for the finish and, and the string tree, which I don't really care about. I could make it period correct, but it's fine the way it is, okay? I mean, I bought this to play it. I didn't buy it as a collector, okay? Bought it to play it. Um, I'm leaving the saddles on. I wrap a little bit of tubing around it so I don't pop strings or pop strings is less. Usually, I put string savers. I'm not doing it on this one, and I did put a five-way switch in it. Um, it's got a, the three-way switch that Holger pulled out. I got it, safe and sound, and we put a new nut on it as well because I knew it was going to need a nut. Okay. Um, I could tell that right off the bat. Um, but I love it. I just absolutely love it. Now, one of the things I would suggest to you guys is if you're looking and you're in the market for these, do your due diligence. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let me just show this to you real quick. I'll try to go as quick as I can. It's a little bit of a relic. Refin, okay, let me see that, really done well, transition logo, 
tuners. There's a new nut. And the back of the guitar. L serial number starts with a 4-2. Think you guys get the idea? And the neck is to die for. Super fast, super playable. L tuners. Um, the reason why I say do your due diligence and because sometimes, I mean, you're always going to, or you may find things that you don't know. And the guy that I bought this from didn't even know this. When I got the guitar, I, I went to screw in the trem arm and realized that I couldn't screw in the trem arm. And the reason why was there was a broken trem arm in the block. So I went, oh, man, not good, not good, not good. So I took it down the street to my neighbor's Twiggy, it's a machinist, and um, I call him Twiggy. And we did a little surgery on the guitar. And we actually drilled out the old trem arm and with a little bit of Teflon tape around the trem arm, the new trem arm is threaded right in. We were very, very lucky, but it actually worked out well. Um, so thanks, Twiggy. Appreciate it, man. Um, other than that, that was it. I didn't freak out over that. I just knew I had to get it out. I wasn't going to leave it that way. I didn't want to order another block, but um, I wanted to keep the original block if I could. So anyway, um, just realize, guys, that these things can be had um, if you're, you know, a vintage guitar enthusiast and are looking for a vintage guitar. There's ways to get them, and uh, you might have to sell some other things. You might have to do it in steps. I'm 62 years old, um, and um, it took me a long time to get them. Like I said, Nick and all those guys were able to grab vintage guitars long before I was able to. But this has been a lifelong dream for me to have an old vintage guitar and it's almost as old as me I was born in 1957 so it's it's absolutely incredible you know so uh, anyway there she is she's an absolute beauty um, as far as the sound goes like I said this really is not wanted to be a, a playing video so if I get a little sloppy please forgive me but um, I'm playing through a 65 Fender Super Reverb, old black face 65 that I have. Uh, it's on six, so it's a little bit loud, but at least you'll get an idea of what this thing will sound like. Um, you know, neck pickup. <laughs> Back to the uh, neck. <laughs> 
soon too if that's what you really want to do so uh happy hunting guys enjoyed uh hope you enjoyed the video and hope it helps you guys or any of you guys that might want to grab a vintage vintage stratocaster okay guys thanks again bye